trying to find out where I left off last time. <laughs> That's a problem with sleeping. You know what? You just forget everything. James, that was a uh, good lesson. I certainly appreciate that lesson. It was so good, in fact, I was almost tempted to pass the collection plate. <laughs> But it didn't, so that's, that's okay. Let's turn to uh, Zechariah, the 13th chapter at verse 8. <clears throat> um, let's go back up to 7. It uh, says there, Awake, O sword. And when you're talking about a sword, it's just a... Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean an actual sword. It could be, but it's more uh, alluding to death, some form of death. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man who is my companion. Of course, this is talking about Jesus, but see, so the man is my companion. So the man, it is man. There's going to be a man, but this man is going to have be the companion so he's going to be to have the same essence as the companion and that is certainly the case with uh, Jesus he does have the same uh, essence as Jesus and he says says the Lord of the host and we see that uh, phraseology quite often here strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered now, Jesus uses this uh, verse about himself when, the, when he has his apostles or at the time disciples gathered together. He uh, quotes this. So this is an allusion to himself. <clears throat> then I will turn my hand against the uh, little ones. And I, I said that the... Um, King James and the ASV says, upon the little ones. If you go to the Hebrew, this word that's translated in the New King James is against. It's translated in the King James and the ASV as upon. And uh, of course, they mean different things. If it's against, it means one thing, and upon means another. And I think probably the King James and the ASV is a better translation than the. Uh, you, King James, turn my hand upon the little ones. He's going to look out after the uh, little ones. And here's where we left off. And it shall come to pass <clears throat> in all the land, uh, says the Lord, that two-thirds of in it shall be cut off and die, but one-third shall be left in it. And you can't take these as absolute percentages, but it just means that during this time, there's going to be uh, quite a few of them that are cut off. And it's going to be a few of them, the faithful, that are going to uh, be brought through the fire, whatever this fire is. And uh, this is, these fires, it, that's the, uh, uh, and it goes on to say, we'll refine them as silver is refined, test them as gold is tested. And you think about uh, gold being refined and, and uh, silver being refined and tested. That's what makes them pure. So these trials, these fires, are what's going to uh, make things pure. And Peter alludes to this in, in 1 Peter 6 and 7. Said, if we refine them as silver, he is refined, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them, and I will say, This is my people, and each one will say, The Lord is my God. They're going to trust in God. And we're talking about the third, we're not talking about the two thirds, we're talking about the third. So, it, uh, to go down to 14, it says, Behold, uh, the day of the Lord is coming and your spoil will be divided in your midst. And I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem, and the city shall be taken. The houses rifled, and the women ravished. 
Half the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Now this may give the impression that it's talking about AD 70 where Jerusalem was destroyed. And I think I read to you previously about from uh, Josephus where he talked about the, the capture of uh, Jerusalem. And half the city didn't go into captivity. All of them went into captivity except those that escaped. So this probably is not talking about the uh, physical Jerusalem, but uh, when talked about cut off from the city, talking about the spiritual Jerusalem. And there's going to be a big change coming in the spiritual Jerusalem. In verse 3 it says, The Lord shall go forth and fight against uh, those nations. And you can go back up to ninth chapter, verse 14, 15, and we'll talk about that. And he fights as he fights uh, in the day of battle. And in that day, the day that he fights in the battle, he, he will stand on the Mount of Olives and uh, you know this whole section here is that the idea that he has fought for his people before and talking about the spiritual Jerusalem he will fight for them again in that day his feet will stand on uh, the Mount of Olives and which facing Jerusalem on the east and the Mount of Olives uh, uh, shall be split in two and when he's standing there, it's really talking about the presence of God in this new Jerusalem. And this is his means of uh, salvation by standing there in the midst of them. From east to west, it just means it's going to cover the whole area. Half the mountain shall move towards the north and half of it towards the south. Then you shall flee through my mountain valley for the mountain valley, a valley shall reach to Azel. Don't really know where that is, but this is uh, giving the uh, idea of security. These people, the third, they are secure in the uh, presence of God here. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. <clears throat> Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. And it shall come to pass in that day, starting verse 6, and you go back to uh, verse 5 to find out what that day is. Anytime you use in that day is referring to the very previous thing that had happened. Uh, they will, that there will be no light, and the lights will diminish, and there shall be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day or night, but at evening time it shall happen that it will be light. And you might go over to Joel, the second chapter, and verse 2 and verse 10, which was quoted in uh, Acts by Peter. <clears throat> um, and it has sort of the same idea that uh, things are going to be dark and diminished and there's going to be a big change. But at evening time, it shall happen that it will be light. So there's going to be help from uh, God. And uh, again in verse 8, In that day it shall be that the living water shall flow from Jerusalem. And you might look at uh, John 7.38. It says, He who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart, will flow rivers of living water. So the living water shall flow from Jerusalem. So not the physical Jerusalem that's going to flow from. It's going to be the spiritual Jerusalem. Half of them towards the eastern sea and half towards the western sea. <coughs> it's going to cover everything. The western sea, of course, is the Mediterranean. And the eastern sea is the Dead Sea. It just, it's going to cover <coughs> all that. <coughs> Uh, and half of them, uh, in both summer and winter, it shall occur. It's going to be all the time. <clears throat> in verse 9, And the Lord 
shall be king over uh, the earth. You can look back at uh, verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 9 and 10. In that day, <coughs> referring to what's said previously, uh, <coughs> it shall be the Lord is one and his name one. And of course, in, in John 10, verse 30, Jesus says that I and my Father are, are one. And again, again, it's the same idea of this uh, man who's my companion. They have the same essence. Uh, of course, Jesus became man, but he still kept the same essence that he had uh, before with the Father. All the land shall be turned into a plain from Geba to Rimmon, south of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be raised up and inhabited in her place from, Benjamin, from Benjamin's gate to the place of the first gate and corner gate, from the Tyre of Hananiel to the king's wine presses. It's just uh, covering the entire uh, portion of uh, Jerusalem. It's going to cover all this, this spiritual city. It says in verse 11, the people shall dwell in it, and no longer shall there, there be uttered destruction. But Jerusalem shall be safely <coughs> inhabited. Well, Jerusalem was destroyed, so it's not talking about the uh, physical Jerusalem, but the uh, spiritual Jerusalem. When you think about the spiritual Jerusalem, it cannot be touched by any enemy. Now, the individual, you know, we know that we are uh, members of the spiritual Jerusalem, the church, and we can't be touched if we don't let ourselves be touched. So there's security in uh, this knowledge that uh, God will be with us and will protect us. <clears throat> All dependent upon us. And this shall be the plague which uh, the Lord will strike. All the people who fought against Jerusalem. So those who uh, attack this spiritual Jerusalem are going to be cursed. Now they may not be cursed in this life. They may be, but... <clears throat> In the life to come, they will certainly be cursed. That their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet, their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. <clears throat> and this just is to give an indication of the horrific uh, condition that these people will, who, who try to attack the spiritual Jerusalem, the church, that they'll eventually uh, suffer. And it shall come to pass in that day, you know, what happened before, uh, that a great panic from the Lord will be among them. Everyone will seize the hand of his neighbor and raise his hand against his neighbor's hand. Um, and this is really talking about the victory of the, the church itself. Judah will also fight at Jerusalem and the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be gathered together, gold, silver, and apparel in a great abundance. And that was the uh, notion of uh, victory when they could gather all the, these things, silver, gold, silver, and apparel. So this is just an indication of the great victory that is going to be the, the spiritual Jerusalem, which is the church. Yes, sir. Well, it says here, Western and Eastern, so it covers both of them. Covers everything, yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the 
he's also talking about what the separation of Jerusalem. Yeah. 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 Ye
This is the only place in the Bible where the word Malachi is used. So we don't know who uh, Malachi is other than he's a, a prophet who is ordained by God to deliver this message. And if you think about it, why is it necessary for anyone to be famous in order to proclaim God's word? Yeah, I think we've seen uh, fairly, it's fairly evident from the uh, minor prophets that most of them, if it weren't for the, uh, the, the book on that minor prophet, we wouldn't know anything about them at all. And most of them, we only know their name. That's all we know. Uh, but the interesting thing about uh, this particular uh, book is the type of um, book that it is. The way it, it teaches, it's called the didactic uh, dialectic method. And it's, uh, it's a method where, um, you, you know, a question is asked, Maybe a theoretical answer is given, and then there's a rebuttal to it and a response to it, and it just goes back and forth. And if anybody has ever, you know what the yeshiva is? Anybody know what the yeshiva, the Jewish schools of uh, instruction? And if you ever, you can actually go on uh, YouTube, you can get everything on YouTube. And you can look at a uh, class in the yeshiva. And uh, the way they do that, they have a, a chavrusa, which is just a companion, they call it a companion. And the way they do that, of course, they are studying the Talmud and the Torah and this, that, and the other. And they may have one person reads, and the chavrusa will make a comment. And they argue back and forth. And if you see one of these uh, yeshiva classes, yeah, they have a bunch of them there, and it's very noisy. Because you got these, these uh, chavrusas, the uh, companion teachers, just going back and forth all the time. And that's sort of like this. So if you want to see what a uh, uh, di uh, dialectic, di uh, didactic uh, teaching method is like, it's, that kind of gives you an idea. So I think we'll wait till, until next time to, to start this. And, um, but that kind of gives you an idea of the, what you can expect from this particular book, the type of method that it uses. And it's a very interesting book. I guess as all of them are, but uh, a lot of these things are directly related to what's been carried over to the New Testament. So we'll, we'll, we'll get in that next time.